that I would hear who I suck. So this is yeah, a beautiful um, tip from the Prophet narrated by Salim after his father Abdullah and Umar that and Umar that the Prophet would give him the gift of money and that could be either from the money of the Zakta or not from the money of Zakta but obviously Ibn Hajar cited this hadith in the chapter of the Zakat. So he's indicating that this is what's meant by Apa. So either because he assigned him to collect the Zakat, or it was just to from yani the treasury by Black Muslim. So Omar would say that I'm content, I have enough. Give him to someone who's more needy. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him the answer that you take it, you possess it and own it, or give it in charity to whomever you want. And he gave him the ruling that whatever money comes to you without you seeking it, without you soliciting it, okay, so that's the rule, then you take it. But Anything that doesn't come you that way, meaning uh, without asking, and don't ask for it, and don't don't be eager for it, and don't chase it. Is that it clear? And that applies to yani, the gifts you take, and they say the money that comes from the government. You don't seek it, but if it comes to you, you take it. Either you own it, you possess it, or you give it in charity. And that ruling yeah, is very important, actually. Said Nadu Sultan. Yeah, they said if the Sultan was Adi, you take the money from him or you don't. You take it, right? Because that's the hadith of the Prophet. It says, not a sultan al jarib. If he gives it to you, you take it or you don't take it. Even better reason to take it. Exactly. You should take it in that case. Because, uh, but you don't own it. If it belongs to you, you take it. If not, you spend it in charity for where it should be spent. So, and you don't leave it for him in order to aid him yeah, and to, to even do more injustice. But you don't seek it, you don't solicit it. Is that a clear? Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa alhamdulillah Any question about zakat? This is the end of the chapter. I want to ask you a question. Uh, regarding somebody had, let's say, $70,000 saving for a year for my house. And then every year, he saved for his paycheck almost 3000 or 4000 and add it to that money so he can have a big chunk of money buy a house. So every year have to pay almost the same amount he's saving every year from his paycheck. What is this how it works? <laughs> you pay that tax. When you pay taxes, you don't ask that question. <laughs> okay. So you pay the card every year, or you invest the money, you put it in a, yani, a low risk growth fund that would give you more than 2.5%, and this is how you protect the money. Sheikh, is it necessary to tell the zakat recipient this is a zakat money? That's a very good question, Jazakallah khairan. And the answer is, you don't have to tell them, actually. So that's in order, yani, yeah. To, to keep their hearts, yeah, I mean, if you give them a gift or something, they accept it. But if you give them a zakat, they might feel down or they might feel insulted. So you don't have to. Malik kana yaqbal al-u'atiyya min al-khalifa, illa an Ahmad ibn Hanbal lam yaqbalha. Kana yata'affaf, falahu fahuwa fi al-khayar. Yani lahu an yata'affaf, falahu an yata'affaf. Imam Ahmad. It's a different story. And, uh, he has his own problems. <laughs> he has his own case. So, Allah, Allah, Allah. Any other questions?
question. <laughs> so the question from yesterday, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. This question turned out to be a major thing. To be uh, yani, a major area of dispute, and Subhanallah, yani, it never came across yani, uh, Shuruh Guru and Haram. But, and honestly, the, the issue is not settled. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of dispute around it, but uh, just to it, two things. Some people say that his name is not Abdul Muttalib, actually, his name is Al-Muttalib. And that's what Ibn Hajar actually chose. But some people said, no, it is Abdul Muttalib, actually. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu excluded that name's name from the people who should be named to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the reason we mentioned that it was a servant of Muttalib and not the slavery to Allah and the servitude to Allah and there is a lot of research about this issue actually yani massive writings about it and uh, they said even this name is excluded that can you name it or not majority of the scholars say it's like it is for this reason because imam muslim when he cited this hadith this is a, a hadith he yeah, cited by imam muslim he called him abdul muttalib he knew what he was talking about and uh, yeah he, but ibn abdul Tur and ibn hajar they said no this was a confusion and his name and Muttalib. And so either his name wasn't Abdul Muttalib, but even if it was, for the reason we mentioned that it's not the servitude and the slavery meant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means a servant. As is commonly used in many of the, not not many, at least one, at least one of the Muslim countries that Abdul Rasul and Abdul Nabi. Abid Zahra or Abid. That's a, yeah. Yeah. So they mean it in that thing. Yeah. Let's say Abdul Nabi, same story. Abdul Rasul, Abid Rasul. Not not typical names. Yeah. Is that the way? The the Hadith is not a person. It is not a person. It is not a person. It is لأن طالب ابن ربيعة ابن الحارث والحارث أهدر الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام ودمه إلى أن أسلم فهذا لم يلد لم تكن له صحبة It is a Sahabi, no doubt He is a Sahabi So that's not the issue at hand He is a Sahabi, no doubt about it The issue if his name was like that or not So we cannot downgrade him Just because of that issue about the hadith So that's This is why يعني we only say what is certain. Yani we, we cannot just uh, uh, extrapolate and make assumptions without having solid knowledge. Conceit, one Abdul. Abdul. That's a good one.